Hi guys, I recently got these 0.3mm thick flexible PCBs from OSTH Park and I thought it would be interesting to compare them to the ones I got which are 0.13mm thick This extra thickness should obviously affect how bended the PCB is but it also should affect the parameters of the coil So let's start off by measuring the resistance of one of these coils Okay, so these are the measured resistance of the two coils even though they have the same exact layout and the same number of turns, the extra distance between the top and bottom layer has reduced the impedance of the coil. This proves that the thinner the PCB, the less turns you require to get the same resistance. But for the specific case, the 0.3mm thick PCB is around 8 ohm less, so it's going to allow more current to pass through for the same voltage. So for example, for 4.2 volts, the thinner coil is drawing around 150mA, while the thicker coil is drawing around 230 milliamps. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because pumping more current through the coil makes the magnetic field stronger, but unfortunately it also means that it heats up more easily. So the next test that I'm going to make is connecting the temperature sensor so that I can read the maximum surface temperature of each coil at 4.2 volts. Okay, so the temperature has settled, the 0.13mm thick actuator is going up to 60, while the other one is going up to 65 degrees Celsius. During this test I noticed that as I increase the voltage, the temperature difference gets higher. So this is another application of PCB coils, it's basically a hot burner, so if you touch that, you get a super hot. <laughs> so I don't recommend using these flexible actuators above 4.2 volts. The next test is the band test. Remember that the 0.3mm thick PCB coil is being driven with more current. So I'm curious to see if this extra power can lead to the same bending results. The test I'm going to run is very simple. I'm just going to place two magnets underneath the two PCBs, repel the coils and vary the bending distance. From this test, we can see that the bending distance needs to be very large to make any flappy movements for the thicker PCBs. To visualize this more clearly, I also got the flex LED design on the same 0.3mm thick stack to show what difference the thinner PCB makes. These results make much more sense when you consider that both the mask and the dielectric material used for the thinner PCB is made from captain material, which is much less stiffer than the material used for the thicker PCBs. After finishing these tests, I received an email from Osage Park saying that they had a manufacturing flow. The copper thickness was set to 1.5 ounce instead of 1 ounce, so this extra thickness in copper may also have helped reducing the resistance of the coil. In this email, they have also announced that in the coming days they will be shifting to an entire substrate to make their flexible PCBs more flexible. But the conclusion for the 0.3mm stick PCB still remains the same. They are too stiff to make any flappy movements, so if you're going to use any of my open source files, please keep in mind that you cannot make these type of motions with them. But you can still use these flexible PCBs for any other project, so I mean this is just one application. For example, you can still use this coil to interact or repel a magnet. Just be careful to power it with a safe voltage. There are other things that affect the behavior of these specific coils, like for example the pitch, the number of layers, the shape of the coil, and even the core material. And I have already done some tests on four layer PCB boards, but I think it's better if we sum this up in another video and test different layers and even flexible PCBs. This way I can always select the best coil for a specific application. So thank you for watching, I hope you learned something from this video, see you in the next one.